Okay. Well, hello everyone and welcome back to Park Retirement Living Speaker Series, Pathways Back Towards Calm. So today is our last session uh, with registered clinical counselor, Joanne Weiler. Uh, Joanne will be speaking for approximately 40 minutes today and there will be an opportunity for questions at the end of the talk once again. So if you do have any questions during the presentation, please make a note and let your active living manager know and they can forward the notes, uh, the questions to us afterwards. Um, any panelists, you can either uh, type your questions in the Q&A box or you can ask to unmute and ask the question yourself, whatever you're comfortable with. Um, again, we'll be recording the session to replay for anyone that wasn't able to attend or if you're wanting to watch the session again. Um, we're going to be sending out all of the links to each of the talks, each of the sessions um, in the next day or so, so that everyone has access to all of them. So a little bit about Joanne. Uh, Joanne Weiler has a bachelor's in psychology and a master's degree in psychology. She is a registered clinical member of the BC Marriage and Family Therapy Association, the American Association of Marriage and Family Therapy, and the BC Association of Clinical Counselors. She has 35 years of experience working in the area of healthcare, family development, and family life transition. Her earlier professional career included working as a health and fitness director for the YMCA and the YWCA in New Westminster. During her parenting years in 1982, she developed one of the first ever women's pre and postnatal fitness programs called the Mom and Me Network. So Joanne will be speaking with us today regarding to lift relationship distress during COVID-19. So please join me in welcoming Joanne Weiler. Thank you so much, Jacqueline. And I just feel really honored to be part of this amazing series about how to kind of really embrace this stage of COVID-19 that we are all going through together. I think for the first time in my lifetime, um, there's the all across the globe, not just in uh, Canada, not just in Columbia, but actually right across the globe to feel really connected in a way that we've never really been ever before. So although it's been a trauma for all of us to have COVID-19 land on us, um, it's also an opportunity. It's really um, given us a lot of opportunities. So in, um, in the session today, I'm going to really talk about the power of love, the power of love that's inside you and inside me and inside us that actually is quite transformative. And so you'll actually have an opportunity to really think about what's actually the benefit of COVID-19 and how is this really possibly um, something that we've actually really needed to slow down, pay attention and truly connect in relationships. So we're all in relationship, but the most primary one is the unconditional love that we hold for ourselves. And from that place of true unconditional love, what's possible is really um, endless. <laughs> so here we go. Um, this is actually, I, I, I put this slide in because, you know, when COVID-19 came, it was so sudden. And I think that's one of the conditions of traumas that it happens. You don't expect it and we don't know how long it's going to last. But you see our resiliency in our culture that we started already creating rituals that we could connect on. And one of those was banging our pots. And we still continue to do this at seven o'clock to say thank you. Thank you for the healthcare work that were that are on the front lines and there for us and thank you thank you for everybody that is doing their part in making sure that we follow habits hand washing and uh, making sure that we um, aren't um, exposing each other to unnecessary um, conditions that could cause us to get COVID-19. For the first time ever, I think we're really, really having to think that our behaviors and choices are impacting others. So I think we're all getting better as human beings because of COVID-19. And that's not even talking about our environment. We've already seen that we're, we're, our environment is just flourishing. I don't know about you, but my garden has just never looked so, so good. And part of it is I think because I'm staying home more, I'm just really enjoying what's here. So I hope I really invite you to kind of think about COVID-19 and this pandemic as a real opportunity 
almost an invitation to have a better relationship with yourself and those in your community, the other residents. So moving right along, as I said, I've um, given talks to government, to engineers, to and continue to do all this. But one of the most special opportunities today for me, speaking with you, um, the residents of Park, and I just really appreciate uh, Jacqueline Louisa for this for setting this all up so I feel like I'm that in the baton race you know I'm the one passing off the last baton as we bring in the fifth part of this five-part series with love so this slide I just I love this because it does you know you see we are all in this together this is actually bringing us together we're actually really much more caring for each other than we've probably ever been before and so how has covid changed your relationships with yourself and with others i'd say one of them is that we're having to slow down we're spending more time in because we are creating our bubbles and in that we're kind of noticing what is available to us I didn't really, I've never really paid mu as much attention to my garden as I have recently. And I'm telling you, it's, um, it's really bringing me a lot of pleasure. So what are some of the positives that you've noticed since COVID-19? And as well, what has been some of the challenges? Because we want to always be looking at the balance of life. And actually from the challenges come our strengths. So um, as we move into this, we have been talking a little bit about strong emotions. Your last session was really about anger. And as you know from that session, anger is like, um, is, is kind of like a crying child that we want to hold it and soothe it and be with it and not be running away from the emotions of anger. Today we're going to talk about all the emotions and how this can all come together in a way see yourself in the stages of grief. As I mentioned, COVID-19 was something that came out of the blue. We didn't expect it. And we do tend to go through, as we would in any grief, in stages that much outlined with um, someone who, her name is uh, Kubler-Ross, and she developed these seven stages of grief. So you may have noticed yourself initially in shock. Is this really happening in BC? We haven't had anything like this before. It can't be happening here. And you'll notice others sometimes still staying in that. It's just really not happening. If I just, I, I just, this isn't happening. And sometimes it can feel quite surreal. Well, that is the stage of shock when something first happens. We really don't know um, where it came from. And you know that these things can might have, you know, happened in uh, Europe, in Asia. Uh, in Italy and other parts of our globe, but not here in our safe haven where we've always known that we're pretty safe. Well, then there's denial. Denial is just, yeah, it's not, I, re I refuse, I crossing my arms, I refuse that this is going to get in the way of my life. I'm going to continue on as I have been. You may have noticed yourself feeling much like a petulant child at times, just that if I, I just don't want to make all these changes, wear a mask or walk in following the arrows or slow my life down and not not be able to go out all these things that have really been hard to handle and hard to accept and some people feel themselves getting a little bit of burnout and you'll notice frustration or anger showing up stronger emotions like that where you might just get really frustrated with someone because they do something that you normally just wouldn't even be bugged about but you feel irritable about that thing. And that's a sign you might be getting a little burnout and a time to pay attention to your motion of anger and slow down and do a little bit of more self-care and, and really be introspective. So COVID-19 is creating an opportunity for us to develop patterns for introspection. And so then, you know, with COVID-19, it can just feel a bit depressing. You know, I didn't ask for COVID-19 to come into my life and I'm just, I'm really sick of it. And you might find yourself feeling kind of hopeless about it at times. And guess what? That's normal too. And so the important thing that if you feel that kind of um, depression, what you want to do is make sure that you're talking to a friend or someone, one of the other residents, 
someone that you trust so that you can share your feelings and you just might find out that they've been feeling a little that way too. These feelings go through us like water or like weather, I should say. And the thing with weather is that, do you know that even when it's gray skies or pouring with rain, behind the weather is always blue sky. So your natural loving state, that unconditional love that's within us and is our birthright, is there all the time. And when you share your feelings, you'll find that the other person has felt that way too. And actually, you're not alone. You're never alone. So uh, that is um, an important part about the stage of depression, to talk. And we might get into a stage of bargaining. Well, you know, I'll kind of accept COVID-19 is happening for a certain part of the day, but I'm just kind of maybe, if I'm really good today, I'm just going to take a day off of COVID-19 tomorrow. Thank you very much. Um, bargaining is the sense that if I do this, it'll go away. And really, the sense is it's a normal stage to feel that stage of bargaining. But the truth is, we don't control COVID-19, but we can control how we process it. And we are not alone. Even if you're living alone, you are not alone if you follow some of the tools and strategies that you'll learn today. And we want to get to acceptance and hope. And when we get to acceptance, it's a stage of, well, actually, you know, COVID-19 has really improved my life. There's actually lots of things about COVID-19 that I've really kind of appreciated. I feel closer to my to the other resident now because I've been talking to that resident more. We have a new friendship because of COVID-19. I can't go out as much, so I'm actually walking a little slower or just being in my life a little bit more. You know what? I feel a bit hopeful about it. And I'm seeing so such a improvement in our environment. I really feel hopeful for our world. In fact, I feel kind of hopeful for my children and my grandchildren that the world that they will grow in will be able to sustain them. Maybe even our ice caps will start repairing themselves. So our whole planet, we know from the research, has actually started our ozone layer is getting better. Our waters are getting cleaner. Our air is fresher. There's a lot of positives and that comes in the state, state of acceptance. And then we get to a stage of integration. And that's when we actually are creating new routines. You may find yourself more aware of health habits. And as you build routines around health habits and you start repeating those routines, you'll find yourself with long-term change where you've integrated new rituals and routines that are actually helping you sleep better, helping you feel better, and to be more connected in a more meaningful way in your life. So emotional intelligence is that sense of being aware of your emotion in your body, being able to perceive the emotion in your body so that you actually then can actually um, grow from that. What am I needing and what am I feeling? So let's move on. There's part of us that feels small. I love this photo of this little boy because we all carry an inner child all of our life. We carry that part of us that feels quite vulnerable at times. And this child is holding an attachment figure. It's, he's holding his teddy bear and he's actually put a mask on his teddy bear. And so you see even in this photograph, this little boy taking care of his teddy bear. As we are taking care of each other, and the research says that the more we care for others, the better we feel about ourselves. So it actually improves our mood to take care of each other. So, but with COVID-19, we can feel a loss of control and some anxiety. Now we know from Deb's session, anxiety can cause us to feel anxious. We could get racing hard at time. And we know now that when you simply put your hand on your heart, it's calming. It's calming to your whole nervous system. We could feel a loss of freedom in the sense that we can't just take a trip and go somewhere. You know, the border has been closed for a period of time and we haven't been able to fly. We can feel really vulnerable not knowing when somebody sneezes, is that COVID-19? Will they be sneezing into their arm? Am I safe? 
we can feel a little angry at ourselves and at others, that irritability coming from burnout. We can feel triggered by small things that we never really would have even be bothered by. And we can have trouble sleeping, which of course sets us into this cycle of unhealth and disconnection. Uh, we can feel spe uh, experience feelings of loneliness where you feel that you are all alone, but in fact, we are never alone. We're never alone spiritually, and I'm going to help you understand ways that you can actually really feel very connected to others. And I think that maybe we can just start with that right now. So what I want you to do is just close your eyes for a moment, and I'll close my eyes with you. And I just want you to just breathe into your body, this beautiful body that you live in, that's been carrying you all your life. And as you breathe into your body, I just want you to notice, notice your breathing and where your breath is going. So if you're breathing in your upper chest, I'd like you to just breathe deep into your belly. So let's breathe in and breathe out. And I want you to breathe in the word let, breathe in let, and breathe out, go. Just breathing out, letting it go. Let's do it again. Breathing in, let. And breathe out, go. And as you're sitting here, your eyes closed, I just want you to imagine yourself with the other residents and your community all following along these new skills that you're learning today, just really appreciating yourself and all of the community for learning all these new skills for unconditional love. So just really appreciate yourself for a moment. And then I want your mind just to pretend to imagine your family so your siblings, your children, your grandchildren, circled around you with all your friends. Just imagine them all connected with you right now, energetically, as you imagine their love coming to you. Just imagine. And then I would like you just to imagine you giving them love. So breathing in and letting go. Love is reciprocal. We take in love and we breathe out love. And then I want you to imagine your ancestors. So your parents and your grandparents, just want you to imagine them in the most loving ways, circled in an outside circle all looking at you right now, just loving you in this moment, really connected in this process of unconditional love with you. And just feel their love coming to you right now as they're with you all the way at all times, anytime you bring them to mind and to heart. So breathing in their love and giving love back and just breathing in and letting go and breathing in and letting go. And just notice your body, notice how you feel right now. Absolutely filled right up with love. Just imagine the color of love. Is it pink? Is it red? Is it yellow? Is it white? All colors. Just imagine your body filled with love right now. And when you're ready, you can just open your eyes. So when in those times when we feel that sense of aloneness and loneliness, you simply want to just do that circle of love exercise, meditate on all the love that's around you all the time. And you'll find yourself feeling much more grounded as you probably do right now. So 
we can lift relationship distress. I like to think of, of things on my hands because it's easy to remember that way. But I've got the five S's. So when you feel um, a little bit of confusion between yourself and someone else, all you need to do is think is set up a conversation that you could come back to that ease and flow of love that you just felt in this exercise because truly you know we're all wanting love and so if we can actually follow a pattern of having those difficult conversations about confusion then we can come back to that loving feeling again which is what we all really want so number one on your thumb you can say see yourself in others you know we're all human beings doing our best and through COVID-19 it's really disturbed us all but we're all just doing our best and so if there's confusion let's try to see the similarities between ourself and the other sometimes we can tell ourselves stories of you know isolation and we get repeated patterns happening but if we can come back to sense to the sense that we are all in this together for the first time in history and well apart from world war ii we are the first time in history in um, in in a time that we are all in this together facing covid19 right across the globe so see yourself and others we're all in this together but if you've got some confusion and it's getting in the way and it's disturbing a loving feeling, we want to set a time. So on your second finger, set a time for, for having that conversation. When you're calm, when you're calm, you're going to be open to be able to connect with the other person and to truly be understood. So set a time because those conversations need to happen when you're not distracted. Start your conversation with I. I feel, I need. Your feelings and your needs are really going to help you move through the confusion and keep it really simple so you can get back into that state of love that we all really, it's our birthright. And sandwich what you say with positive affirmation. So I think of sandwich because I think of a love sandwich in a way. So you want to say something positive say the one thing that's got in the way that's really upset you and then finish with something loving after so you kind of feel complete in a sense of affirmation content affirmation and then send the message to the other person that you know don't be so stuck on the on the power struggle of needing to be right but we are getting better the message is we can get better i can get better at doing this differently you know, the only thing we truly, truly control is our choice for doing our best, our choice to grow. And that is our choice all the time. And so if we can come from a place of that growth mindset, we're going to actually come across very well to the other person. So I love this photo. You know, it's, you see the mirror. In fact, what we see in others is actually usually what we're going through ourselves. And so often when we are upset with something that someone has said to us, or if we're upset with something that, some, that, that somebody else has done, it's usually coming from ourself. It's a story that we're working through. And so I don't know, but many of my clients sometimes have a story of I don't matter. And so when they're coming from a story of I don't matter, they're flying with that story of I don't matter, they tend to kind of just notice evidence that is congruent with this idea that I don't matter. And guess what? They just end up feeling worse and worse. And so we have power over the stories that we tell ourselves and because it'll help us look at different um, aspects of the other person it'll help us change our story into what we really want is i matter so if you get a story going write down the irrational worry that i don't matter write it down on a piece of paper and then write down the positive opposite to that i matter because we all matter we just don't know it all the time but if you write down i do matter and then look for all the evidence for I do matter, you'll notice lots of evidence for that. 
So when we've got a story going, we tend to look for the information that is in our lives already. This will empower you, this exercise of writing down the negative story, then change it, flip it into the positive opposite, and then look for the evidence of the positive opposite. So the same is true when someone is upset with us. Try to imagine uh, asking questions about what they're saying because often it's a reflection of their story. So their insecurities, their vulnerabilities may be projecting on you. And if you don't react to it, but you get curious, then you actually, and you can, then you'll have compassion for them and you'll create change. So when you take time to do that exercise, that will help you lift out of the power struggle and start to build a bridge. So, and this kind of happens when you've got, when you're coming from a place of capacity. So when you've been taking care of yourself, you'll find yourself feeling better about other people. So when you're taking care of yourself, eating well, sleeping well, exercising, those kinds of things help you feel whole, like you are full wingspan. And in that way, you'll find yourself feeling better about others and you'll find them feeling better about you as well. So, you know, but we all need to lighten up a little bit at times because this has been hard for all of us and we're bound to have a little burnout sometimes. And so again, as I mentioned, irritability, anger, all those strong emotions, anxiety show up when we're feeling a little burnt out. But to get back into your full wingspan and feeling good and bright about the world, take some time to really reflect on exercises that will help you remind yourself of how much love is inside you. And you are the accumulation of the love of your family, the love of your friends, and all the best things and all those people that are in your life if you are coming from a loving state. So when you have that conversation though, because there's always going to be times that we confuse each other, and that's what anger is, it's really just confusion. So at a time that's convenient for both of you, we can't kind of, you know, snafu someone if they're busy with something at the time they're just not going to be ready for the conversation so it's important for both of you to not feel rushed so you don't feel anxious and you've you're able to kind of come from the best part of your brain so we want to come from that anterior lobe of your brain that has got the ability to reason has the capacity to see the goodness in the other person and not from the amygdala at the back of the brain that we've talked about before which is the part that stores all the negative things that ever happen in our life all the trauma is stored at the back of our brain so we want to feel calm so we can come from this part of your brain and and feel resourced so that we're actually um, going to get a positive result coming from love so is that for you a morning time or lunch time or is it best for you in the evening? Choose a time that that works for you. We are who we are and also check in with the other person. You may have to compromise. If you're a morning person and they're an evening person, maybe the conversation happens at noon. And stay with one topic. There is nothing that will flood you faster than flood the receiver faster than having too much interest in too many different things, you know, so that you're building a thesis against somebody else. That's not going to work. Stick with one topic at a time. So if you're talking about one thing, um, that you'll probably get a positive result from that. So context matters. Tone matters as well, you know, talk slowly so the person can actually really take in what you're saying, you know, so that we can go slowly. And, um, and at the end of the conversation, talk about, you know, do you feel complete on this topic? Because you want to walk away with everybody feeling better than you did at the beginning of the conversation. The goal is not to make somebody feel badly or for you to walk away feeling badly. You want to be in that unconditional love. We don't have to be perfect. We're definitely going to make mistakes at time from time to time. But if we can come from that earnest place of trying to be compassionate for each other, we will find a middle ground. 
uh, I just want to share a funny story and I'm just, it just helps to really understand what I'm saying. But I had a couple and they were a retired couple and, um, oh, they needed some dishwasher soap. And um, the husband had said to his wife, uh, can you bring back some Joy liquid soap? And she had gone to the store and because they're on a budget now, having retired, she bought the detergent that was on sale. Well, she came home, you know, proud of herself. She'd got sunlight detergent. And um, her husband was so distraught. He was so upset. He went right to anger. And they went through the stages of, you know, kind of setting up success in the conversation where they went to, what are you feeling? What's important about this? And what happened was that for him, when she bought sunlight, not the ivory soap, she fe he felt that, she didn't care about him. She didn't love him. If she had loved him, she would have got the soap he wanted. And what she felt is that he disregarded her need, you know, to work within a budget. She felt, she felt proud that she'd found something on sale. So we want to kind of understand what's underneath the story. So for her, she had some fears about their budget, about money spending. And for him, he had been feeling unimportant and not seen and so they had a much more intimate conversation about one of the two topics that are really important in life and to feel safe as well that we've got love and that we've got resources to survive so it ended up in a really good intimate conversation so we want to kind of be able to really experience each other in the vulnerabilities that are underneath the story what's the theme what's important so to get there, always start with I. And I love this screen, this photo of this tree. It's so beautiful. And you'll see leaves spreading around. The idea is that relationships are little miracles. It's the only way that we grow. It's amazing how we meet each other. It's perfectly, perfectly designed to come back to love. And from a loving place, we spread more love. But if we're not in a healthy place and we haven't been taking care of ourselves, what we do is, you know, becomes power struggles and, and a lot of blaming and shaming, which is the gnarly finger facing out you, 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 which is not going to help at all. Motivation comes from feeling safe and from the feeling of compassion. So start your conversations with I. It's how we stand. We are actually virtually a letter I. So if you ever forget that, you don't need your five fingers. You just need your stance, which is I. I feel, I feel whatever it is. I've been feeling lonely. I need more time with you. Um, it might be that um, I, I, I need... I need the ivory soap, even though it's a little bit more expensive. <laughs> if he had said that to her, she would have absolutely bought the ivory soap because she loved him before anything else. So with empathy and compassion, we set up the context of safety. So just really kind of check in with yourself right now. How do you feel in your body? Our body is experiencing emotion. Every five seconds, we have different emotions that goes through us. So just breathing into your body right now, let's just do a quick scan of your body. How do you feel right now? Just breathing into your body and just notice your shoulders. Are they kind of scrunched up here? Do you feel tight? That might be a sign you're slightly stressed. So you might just lovingly drop your shoulders let your shoulders down. Just breathe into your shoulders. And sometimes when I'm really not particularly stressed, I just imagine my mom and my father both passed away, but sometimes I'll just imagine their loving hands on my shoulders and just really with me. And it's just so calming, you know? So it's just actually thinking about how you're feeling in your shoulders. You might just notice your, your chest right now. Does it feel open and expansive or tight and constricted? There's no wrong. It's just to notice, just notice how it feels. Does it feel warm here or cool? So just breathe into your heart and breathe out just to expand and just release. And so you might notice your stomach and does it feel uh, open 
my stomach feels a little chubby. I got to be honest. I've got the COVID-10. I don't know about you, but um, I'm working on that. Anyways, um, but my stomach, how does your stomach feel? So feelings or emotions, happy, mad, sad, anxious, whatever is there. Just notice how you're feeling in your stomach. And you, and you might put your hand on your stomach, just soothing it right now. Just acknowledging that you're here for your body, which is your first relationship. It's the one that's lifelong, our body, taking care of our body, nurturing, loving, and having compassion. So once you identify your feelings, then you're ready for that conversation. I'm feeling whatever it is. I need whatever it is. Feelings and needs so important for unconditional love and connection. And this is just a great um, photo. I just love this because it shows a man, or it could be a woman with short hair. <laughs> um, and you see the, the heart is just lit up with light because our emotional experience is our strength. And it's what we have control over. So it's up to us to self-regulate so that our nervous system and our brain, which is whole body, our brain is not just the gray matter in our head, it's our whole nervous system. And when we self-regulate, which means breathing and calming and using self-regulation tools like maybe tapping or meditation or walking mindfully, we actually help our body function and we will live longer. And guess what? It boosts our immune system as well. We know from research, it even helps the healing process. So there's been studies on people who have had injuries and those that are doing mindfulness and body consciousness awareness and they heal faster in two groups. So what we know is that we can really make a difference to work with our body and its own natural healing process by practicing meditation and self-regulation. So you also want to help others do well as well. So when you acknowledge others, you are creating the conditions of change, the conditions of unconditional love. We don't need an argument. We want to get better in these miracles that we have, these relationships with ourselves and with others. Love is an absolute healing state. It's a, it primes us. It primes us for learning and growing. When we're angry and constricted, we can't learn. Our brain pathways are like dry rivers. And when you actually practice self-regulation and you are in conversations with others, remember it's relationships that help us build new pathways, new learning, new stories that make us happy. And life, I believe, is about coming back to that natural knowing we had as newborns that we were loved in the world. It's your birthright. When you were born, you were, you, you were a little body, a bundle of love, and it's through life we forget about that. We start to get, um, you know, kind of funny expectations. We want to come back to that unconditional love. And that's not to say you're perfect. You are perfectly imperfect, just like me, just like all the other residents. We're just all of us doing the best. But mistakes will help us learn if we're in a good growth mindset. So... We want to keep love up and stress down. COVID-19 is a wonderful way. So to get there, sandwich. So that's that S, right? Sandwich what you're saying. Start with a positive. Think of something that you can say to the other person that you appreciate about them. And then have the conversation about that one thing. And then sandwich the other side of it with something positive about having this conversation. It really meant a lot to me that you took the time to talk to me about this and I'm really going to give it some thought. So I'm appreciating the other person. So that's the sandwich technique. So send the message to the other person. I can get better at that thing. You know, we're all growing. We don't, we don't have the answers. If, if we had all the answers, what would be the point of living? You know, we're here to grow in these little miracles of love and relationship. So be open to, to, to grow. And when you feel blocked, 
um, a great way to kind of get back on track is to remember a time that you felt really good. Journal your thoughts as well. That's a great way to kind of think through things so that you actually um, have an opportunity to kind of maybe do that that irrational thought remember the positive opposite and write down all the evidence for the positive so we're actively training our brain towards love not fear and so talk through resentments don't just leave things and try to see the best in your partner you know we're, we're a whole combination of good the bad and the ugly you know we all have the many faces of eve in other words there's a part of us that feels vulnerable and small like that child we saw and there's another part of us that that feels um you know playful and childlike and another part of us that's wise and sage and um, we are mother and father to ourselves. We are sister and brother to ourselves. And we want to try to kind of bring that whole collection of who we are, the imperfect self, the one that makes mistakes too. So we can be in that growth mindset and love all of ourselves and love others in the same way. So try to shine a light on the best things about the other person. And um, I have here too, values. You know, so when we think about COVID-19, it has happened suddenly, and it's changed just about everything in our lives. But when you come back to values, like what values are showing up? For me, family, the value of family, I've, I've, I really feel much more um, my time with my children, and uh, my time with my, my friends, um, which, you know, and the time with my husband as being really really so special and the value of connection the value of love all of these things are values but what values are important to you talk about them with someone else because that is what will connect you even when you're not seeing eye to eye sometimes we do have confusion and it's hard to see things the same way but your values will bring you back to a place of alignment so when you feel just off, here's some ways to get back onto that unconditional love for self. Do you know that playing music actually activates the brain in such a way that research has shown that it makes a difference for those with Alzheimer's, that you actually will have an improved brain uh, function just by playing music. And it's actually good to play music that have been music from special times in your life. So music at times when you've really been happy, there'll be music will cue a whole floodgate of wonderful memories that will improve your mood. And it will also connect you to others. So music is a wonderful way. And whether you're actually full on dancing or whether you're just tapping your feet, let the body move with the music so that you are um, allowing your body to self-regulate to actually clear away the anxious energy and bring back more love you can choose a physical outlet like tapping when you have a, a difficult time sleeping um, at night if you're having trouble sleeping what can be quite helpful is actually put your hands across your your um your Put your hands across your um, chest at your collarbone and just like butterfly tapping, alternate tapping this way on your chest. And when you do this, you activate the hormone oxytocin. So you would tap this way for about a minute like this pretty vigorously and then hold your hands in place and you'll find yourself in a kind of warm sensation and that's oxytocin moving through your body which is calming and that allows you to kind of then roll over and go to sleep oxytocin is the attachment hormone that calms the anxious brain and um, so you could actually do some singing singing as well um, activates endorphins and um, you know on the subject of hormones getting into new environments is really important right now we actually um, 
need dopamine. And if you're inside in the same space too much, what happens is that you have a reduction in dopamine. Dopamine is the happiness hormone. So simply by getting outside and going for a walk will help activate and rise your dopamine levels. So go for a walk, get outside, even change rooms, all those kinds of things will activate dopamine. So we've talked about purpose. Looking at old photos is a wonderful way to activate, you know, endorphin and, you know, happiness hormones. Just remembering the time that you were doing the activity because we tend to take photos, have you noticed, in happy moments. So when you look back at that, try to even recall the smells of the context of where you were. That actually will activate a calming um, pattern in your brain. It, it actually, the occipital lobe is um, where you actually sense. And so you actually um, calm the whole nervous system down just with the smells. So we know from research as well that lavender, for instance, the smell of lavender really does, it is calming, but also just recalling the smell. If you were looking at a trip of yourself in Hawaii, and you can just smell the ocean smells, just recalling the smell of the ocean will change. Your nervous system will he is healing. And eye contact right now is particularly important because many of us are wearing masks a lot of the time. And so it's actually highlighting the eyes. So your eyes smile, you know? So practice smiling with your eyes and really making that connection with the eyes actually activates the brain again, with the hormones that actually make you feel love. So connecting with eyes, it's not like that staring contest thing, but it's actually, you know, looking at each other and really noticing, taking that time. I think that's another benefit of COVID-19 is we're spending more time together. So, and, um, so let's just move on. So from these exercises, you, you get what's called attunement. And do you know how an instrument tunes up? If you hear an orchestra, the instruments tune in, you'll see, you'll hear all of the different instruments tuning. Well, we are tuning to each other, attuning to each other. So in relationship, when we come from love, we're actually creating love for the other person too and connecting. So by using our mirror neurons, because our mirror neurons is where we get empathy and we're with each other in the experience. So in all feelings, in happy, sad, mad, glad, love, all of those states, we share the mirror neurons. If, if our family trips, for instance, we kind of go, we jump as well. Those are your mirror neurons. So by doing an exercise of breathing or just eye gazing together or just slowing down, there's more chance that those mirror neurons are going to be turned on and um, it's going to make your relationships better. You're going to feel better. Feeling seen and understood is one of the primary needs, just like water. We need to matter in our lives. And it, this is a legacy stage of our lives as we're moving into, you know, the latter, the, the, the last half of our lives. We're, we're kind of in a stage of, of really, what is our life really about? And our lives matter in our relationships with others. And so it's a time to really think about um, connecting more than disconnecting about coming from love and and spreading love as you saw with that slide with the tree so anyways attuning also um, happens with you know playing with proximity when I come in close to the screen I'm, I'm connecting for emphasis or I'm moving out just creating a kind of pause so you can play with your your voice with your proximity you also when you cross your arms over kind of like that I'm blocking you from connecting with me but if I open my arms I'm actually allowing you in so practice body language and if you feel down or kind of anxious, simply lift your arms in the air and research says that that will change your mood state simply by lifting your arms in the air. Yeah, yeah, baby, lift up your arms. <laughs> you might, everybody just try that right now. Just by lifting your arms, your whole body changes your whole emotional experience. So you can play with that. And if you're feeling lonely, send out an SOS. So 
in your circle, if you've got a safe circle of, of someone who is in your circle and you're hugging, ask for a hug. That skin on skin or like having a hug, it creates oxytocin. But if you're living alone, the tapping also creates oxytocin and creates that that body response of um, calming hormones that will make you feel happy and whole and connected again so i call it sos skin on skin so your hands tapping on your shoulders like this you do that for about a minute we could all try this right now and just alternate tapping on your arms and you just do it pretty firmly so you can kind of hear yourself tapping and then just hold your hands in place and you'll feel a warm rush through your body. And that's oxytocin. That's the uh, attachment hormone that makes us feel calm. So we talked about stories. Of course, we want to live with a good love story. But the trouble is, sometimes we have a negative story that happens when we're young, and we hold on to that. So one of my clients actually had a, an, you know, a retirement a client actually had had you know her, her early experience was that she had a crush on somebody at school and she'd held on to this sense of rejection this this person had rejected her and um and she tended to expect through her life as she looked through a relationship pathway that all through her life people would be rejecting her and so she kept looking for that story of rejection and of course she ended up being rejected because what we pay attention to we actually see more of that's the secret so if we have a choice to think about rejection or connection what would you prefer i think connection so um so what we want to do is think about your early stories of love and did did you have a positive experience with that if yes great and if no let's just go to the positive opposite i am connected so you start looking for the evidence in your day that is about positivity and connection all the what we really really want so those early stories can really set our expectations through our life even now so you can actually change your story we know from daniel amon's research this is a man who did a lot of research on the brain that the brain is changing right through our lifespan so right through our lifespan we are changing our pathways if we practice mindfulness meditation exercise eating well all of those things will help us actually change Right through our lifespan. So any age, it's so exciting, you know. So that means you can have more love. And if you actually actively create that state within you, you know what? You're going to be shining it outside of you. So, you know, what ways might you apply a new love story, the love story that you want, that one of unconditional love, so that you can actually truly accept yourself and really appreciate that this is an opportunity with COVID-19 to pause and just kind of think about, have I been coming from a loving state or am I coming from a place of expecting rejection and, and really come from a place of trust? So here I love this photo because this little elephant is in a context of love with mama elephant and papa elephant. <laughs> and you can see love is elevating this little elephant. <laughs> and in some ways, I think that we do that for each other all the time. Love is felt in our bodies. It makes our ears, you know, lift. It, it makes our bodies lift. It creates a potential for really making a difference at any stage of life. And it will inspire new hobbies that you can develop now. I know clients who have started painting at you know, latter stages of her life and his life and, you know, that had never painted before, but are really inspired to express themselves. Love is, activates the creative brain. It makes us have potential. I can't remember the name of the artist, but she painted, she was from New York and she ended up in Santa Fe. I can't remember her name right now, but she actually painted right it through her 90s. They would actually lift her up on a scaffolding. Do you know she's the one that did all those orchids? Anyways, 
um, she, she was lifted up on a scaffolding so she could paint these massively big paintings halfway and mid into her 90s. So, you know, Sandra O'Keefe, it was O'Keefe um, who did that. And so, you know, we have the potential of so much. We have no idea about how transformative and capacity creating that love truly is. So I want to kind of come back to that loving connection that we have with ourselves, and do that right now. So just place your hand on your heart. And I want you to put, you can just experiment, see how it feels with one or two hands. I'm going to put both hands on my heart and just close your eyes for a moment. And I just want you to connect with your, with your, with, with your heart right now and just really feeling grateful for you. And I really want you to think about, you know, something really, truly wonderful about you. So something that you're just a little bit proud of. You know, it could be just the sense that you are caring. I just want you to think about something that has even shown up that you've done today that is just kind of special. Just a little moment that you might have had with somebody. And I want you just to say, and this is taken from Kristen Neff's compassion therapy model of meditation. And I just want you to say to yourself, may I have love? And just breathe that in. May I have ease? Just breathe that in. And may I have hope? And then I want you to think about yourself and the other residents that are on this call right now. May we have ease. May we have hope. May we have love. And I want you to come back to your loving circle. Think about your family, your, 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 your daughters, your sons, your friends your siblings. May we have ease. May we all have hope. May we all have love. And then I want you to think about your ancestors, those people who have passed, who have loved you and continue to love you. Think about your parents, your grandparents, your great great grandparents, imagine them circled around you right now. love. May we all have ease. May we all have hope. May we all have love. And then just keeping your eyes closed, just let your hands go to the side and just notice, just notice your body right now. Notice how you feel in your body. Notice any new lightness that you feel, any spaciousness. And just take a deep breath in and breathe out. And when you're ready, you can just open your eyes again. Love certainly is transformative. I've got a few um, um, great books written down here that you might find quite helpful. And I'm going to read you something from Miguel Ruiz's book called The Four Agreements. And it's a prayer for love. And he says, thank you, creator of the universe, for the gift of life that you have given me. Thank you for giving me everything that I've ever needed. Thank you for the opportunity to experience this beautiful body and this wonderful mind. Thank you for living inside me with all your love and your pure and boundless spirit with your warm and radiating light. I love you just the way you are. And because I am your creation, I love myself just the way I am. Help me to keep the love and the peace in my heart and to make that love a new way of life that I may live in love the rest of my life. That's Dan Miguel Ruiz, The Four Agreements. 
The Power of Being Kind to Yourself is a wonderful book as well. And just about coming from that place of compassion, Kristen Neff. And Hold Me Tight is Susan Johnson. She was the founder of Emotionally Focused Therapy. And just about how important it is to come from emotion and attachment theory, which is kind of what I've been talking about today. And what makes love last? You know, John Gottman has got a love lab in Seattle, and he says one of the ways that he knows he can predict outcomes for couples that he works with is actually eye contact. So in our own state of well-being, I've mentioned today about eye contact and how helpful it is just to make eye contact. This is a simple thing, but you can smile with your eyes. When you can't see a smile with the mask on, you can certainly see smiling eyes eyes and get the love that you want that's Harville Hendrix he's just um, you know he um, has got the idea of the imago therapy which is the imago is the between it's kind of the miracle so there's what's the story I've been telling the story that you've been telling and together the mix we create what he calls the imago which is where the mix is the alchemy the the special way that we can actually really develop ourselves and get better we're all just getting better in life but we get better in life through love so love is all we need I love that song and if I could sing right now I would sing for you <laughs> love is all you need so I guess we have some time for some questions thank you Joanne that was fantastic and love is all you need that's for sure <laughs> <laughs> yes I bought my daughter the book so we sing along to it almost every night she loves the song it's it's great oh yeah so we've got a couple of minutes we did start a little bit late today so I want to be cognizant of time but um, we have some time for one or two questions to come through um, and if we don't get to those other questions, if there's more, we can jot them down and um, send them off to Joanne and get back to you. But any I, of our, I, yeah, any I of can, the active I, living team? Any questions coming forward? I'm happy to answer questions if um, anybody has any questions about the communication tool or about the tapping. Um, ways that you can you know self-regulate and um, try to see the best in each other mm -hmm. there's one here what if the person you want to relate to doesn't want to relate to you mm. that's mm. a really tough one isn't it because if somebody is not open for the conversation um, you might actually journal in um, and journal your thoughts you don't want to stuff the frustrating experience you know down because it just actually builds more and more but if you can actually write down in a journal you could write a letter to the person that you maybe don't ever give but it just allows you to kind of um, you know process the uh, the upset and understand why it's upset you try the reflective thing as well so that you actually think about the story that you've got going on that person you know that it's upset you is there any part of that that feels familiar to you something that you're needing to work through so for instance sometimes uh, you know um, somebody might feel um, here's the invitation so I'll give an example a client of mine was really frustrated because and got mad actually at somebody that cut in front of them in a lineup for a movie and uh, you know they really let them know that they were really upset and anyway they ended up getting kicked out and not able to go see the movie after all so you don't want to do that but they walked away and they thought about like why was it that that upset them and what it was when they reflected is why is this important for me because that's the question what what is important about this what is important about it was the sense that that person was being kind of pushy and they were getting into the front of the lineup being pushy and this person this client of mine needed to invite back not being pushy but actually feeling a little bit more in front of their life like asking for what they want so when you go to the self-reflection in your journal you often discover things that you need to you know maybe practice in your own life like you know saying that what you need being a little bit more like the person that kind of bugs you so if we can't work it out with the other person there's still a stimulus for change 
And you know, the other thing too is that people sometimes will come back to it the next day and sometimes just giving time. So, you know, in the the idea of the um, the five S's, you know, um, one of them was to set a time that works for both of you. So you might actually offer two options, you know, I'd really like to talk to you about this. It would really mean a lot to me. Um, would you be willing to talk to me today or tomorrow? And so offering those two options of today or tomorrow, generally they will choose one of those two times. So that can help as well. But, um, and, and so remember the, the five S's, see yourself and the other person, set a time that works for them and start the conversation with I so you're not intimidating. You want a better outcome for both of you. And remember to sandwich the positive and send a message that, you know, I'm just trying to get better at life. I want our relationship to get better. That's an invitation for growth. Absolutely. We have time for one more question. Okay, I think that might be it for now then. Well, thank you so much. I totally appreciate what you're doing. And I, you know, have ended with the sense of hand in hand. We are hand in hand in life and now more than ever. And in a, in a pause because of COVID-19 to really, really reassess and really make a difference at any stage, at, at any age. And um, I just really appreciate, I'm so grateful for this opportunity to share some ideas with you today. So thank you. Thank you very much, Joanne. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> yeah.